Hello there, my RPG lovers, and welcome to another video. Gothic is a legendary old-school PC RPG, which came out over 22 years ago. If you're new around here, you probably don't know that I'm a huge fan of Gothic RPGs, and I made various videos about them on this channel. The port for Nintendo Switch came out of the blue, but I wasn't that surprised. Ever since THQ acquired Piranha Bytes, the studio behind Gothic RPGs, they've been making some serious moves. They hired the studio to work on a full-blown Gothic remake, and now we have a Switch port for the classic version. I think it might be best if I just turn back. I'm really glad that Switch players now have the opportunity to check out this classic open-world RPG, but even the veteran players could find some of the features very interesting. First of all, THQ Nordic published this insane list of fixes and some changes for the Gothic on Switch. I'm going to go over some of the most interesting changes and talk a little bit in general how it feels to experience this old RPG on Nintendo Switch. There are some features that I didn't expect to see in this port, so I'm pleasantly surprised. However, it also has some problems that we're going to discuss. Let's start with the performance and visuals. Now, I must tell you right away that my equipment for capturing Switch footage is not all the great. Even so, I think I managed to do a decent job so you can clearly see some differences. Gothic 1 on Switch has a variable frame rate, and this port tries to reach that sweet spot of 60 FPS. I would say it manages to do that for about 80% of the time, it definitely has some frame drops here and there. Now, I don't have the tools to actually measure the FPS, but I can tell you without any doubt that there are a lot of noticeable frame drops in certain locations. I hope to see at least a patch or two that will try to completely optimize the game, but even like this, I think it's completely playable. I'm mostly talking about the dock performance because I still didn't have the time to properly test the handheld modes because I basically just got a review key two days ago. So far, the handheld mode seems to perform very similar to the dock mode. When it comes to the visuals, here is where it gets a lot more interesting. Gothic really didn't age all that well, but there is some notable visual differences between the Switch and PC. Now of course, you can mod the hell out of Gothic 1 on PC, and it will look a lot better than vanilla game and the Switch port by far. However, the Switch version in docked mode looks better in general compared to PC vanilla. I recorded this footage with my phone. <laughs> yeah, I know, very professional. But even so, you should be able to tell the difference. Since the Switch version outputs the resolution on 1080p, that's what I tested on PC as well. But even when I put the game on 4K on PC, the Switch version just looks a bit more detailed and way sharper. A little bit too sharp to be honest, but the sharpness is not the only factor here. The Switch version obviously has a different FOV, and the image scaling on the Switch is a lot better. The menu, inventory, and the game in general are scaled properly, and the resolution of the menu and other UI features look higher. To put it simply, I would rather play the Switch docked version in 1080p than 4K on PC if I don't have any plans to mod the game. The frame rate is a totally different story. Even if you have a cheap PC, it will run the game better than the Switch. The handheld mode is pretty much the same as far as I could tell. The game looks really nice on the smaller screen, and it's only satisfying to play the game like this. I usually prefer to play Switch games in handheld mode in general. Like I said, the game manages to hit that 60 FPS for the most part, but you have plenty of frame drops while exploring some open areas. But I'm really glad to say that all three camps have very little frame drops. You're going to spend a lot of time in these places, so this is some great news. Frame drops usually happen in some parts of the open world. I assume that this has something to do with the view range. As far as I could tell, the Switch version tries to push that 300% view range, which is the highest you can get in Vanilla Gothic on PC as well. This port also has some brand new UI features, which actually improve the gameplay in a couple of ways. The whole UI is almost completely redone. Health and mana bars are the same, but the whole inventory system is changed from the ground up. Gothic had some very outdated inventory design, with only one row of items with clumsy keyboard navigation. The Switch port, on the other hand, has a clean and modernized inventory, which is much easier to navigate. Item types have their own unique icons and categories, which is a welcoming quality of life change. There is a very nice tab for the in-game maps as well, and it allows you to see all the maps you collected and seamlessly switch between them. Then we have the hot bar menu, which you can activate by holding the R button. You can assign up to 4 consumables on your D-pad and use them by holding R and pressing the corresponding D-pad button, it's very useful in this game. 
The original game also had a quick bar, but I would say that the new UI works a lot better. Magic runes and scrolls have their own dedicated quick slot menu as well. This new UI looks pretty basic and it's almost like a mobile game, but it's a very welcoming feature. It's clean and easy to understand, despite its basic visual style. What has to be one of my most favorite features on the Switch is the ability to equip two different melee weapons at once. You can assign any weapon to ZR and ZL and switch the weapon on the fly by pressing one of these buttons. Original Gothic had the option to equip a ranged and a melee weapon at once, but you could never equip two different melee weapons. For example, shortly after you begin the game, you'll find a pickaxe and a couple of one-handed swords. You can even equip two different one-handed swords, although you can't see both of them at the same time. However, if you equip a one-handed and a two-handed weapon at once, you will see both of these weapons on the Nameless Hero. This is a subtle but a very useful new feature. I thought I was going crazy because I thought you could do this in the base game as well. But I checked multiple times on PC and you can't equip two melee weapons at once. Then we have the option to quick save and quick load by using the plus and minus buttons, which is very helpful. Gothic doesn't have an auto save feature and this game can be brutal, especially in the beginning. So I suggest using the quick save feature as much as possible. In other words, saves come a lot. If you're a new player, trust me, that's the best advice you can get. Don't pay attention to me. I'll stay with you. Don't worry. The combat works surprisingly well on the Switch. Mostly because of the change we already talked about, you don't have to combine two different buttons to attack. Well, that's actually not completely true, because the best attack you have in the beginning can be performed by holding A and moving the left thumbstick left and right. Swinging your weapon left and right is the best move in the beginning until you learn advanced combos with the weapon type of your choice. If you're new to Gothic, this is very important to understand about the progression and combat in general. When you get better with one-handed or two-handed weapons, you will unlock new combos and animations. Until then, your nameless hero will hold the weapon in a very clumsy way and the attacks are not that effective. The regular attack is much easier to use now, as well as the overhead running attack since you only have to use one button. So what about the motion controls on the Switch? Well, I didn't expect such a feature in Gothic, but here we are. You can enable motion controls which allow you to attack, block and move a little bit in combat. It's interesting for a while, especially the left and right swinging attack, but I wouldn't play the game like this in longer gameplay sessions. But just the fact they included this feature in such an old game that had clumsy controls is impressive to say the least. Those would be the biggest changes slash features I wanted to cover in this port. Here are a couple of small, random improvements from those huge patch notes. There are many more similar fixes and improvements that you can check out in the full patch notes. And that will be it for this video. Let me pass! I plan to do a full playthrough, maybe even on stream, and then I'll probably do another video about the sports. It's definitely a pleasant surprise because, to be honest, I expected a lazy Switch port. But fortunately that's not the case and I can say for sure that this port is quite possibly the most convenient way to play the game nowadays. If you don't intend to mod the game on PC. And if you have Switch of course. Don't forget to leave the thumbs up button if you like the video and support the channel by subscribing. Speaking of supporting the channel, I just launched my personal store where you can buy some interesting t-shirts and hoodies. Check out some cool designs in the theme of the channel like this RPG Zone hoodie or Nameless Hero t-shirt. But you'll find a lot more if you follow the link in the description. I think that's a great way to get something back for supporting the channel. And of course, you can always become a Patreon or a YouTube member and get your name on the end credits of my videos. Many thanks to all of my current supporters and I'll see you in the next one.